The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. It's a great joy to be here with you this morning. We're going to cross several borders today. No passports required. But we will mark the passage in a variety of ways. Seven young people are going to confirm their status as adult Christians. It's not a passive act. It's not something being done to them. They're not being carried across the border unwillingly or in secret. They are actively confirming their faith and their willingness to keep living on what Jesus' early followers called the way, the road. It is the way of abundant life for all, all human beings, all creation, for we follow one who insisted that abundant life is God's dream for us all. We mark this border crossing with vows and prayers, as well as the laying on of hands. Several other traditions mark a border like this by extending the right hand of fellowship, not unlike the peace we exchange before we gather around God's table. It's both an invitation and a renewal of our commitment to cross the boundaries between us, divisions known and unknown. I have a friend who tells about his experience during the early years of this prayer book. He was traveling across the country and he stopped in for church one morning. When it came time for the peace, the grandmotherly woman in the pew with him picked up her prayer book and exclaimed, Don't you dare touch me, young man! <laughs> Borders can be challenging. <laughs> the peace remembers those early generations of Christians and what they did as they struggled to survive in the face of persecution. It, wa it wasn't as domesticated as our handshake. It was a much more intimate kiss of peace on both cheeks, 
or three embraces, as many still do in the Middle East. We practice here what we try to make real out there in the world. We remember the dreams so we can do it out there. Paul and Silas have crossed a border in coming to Philippi. They've entered Europe, home turf for the Romans. And they're reaching out to Gentiles, other Jews, and to Roman citizens. Just before the piece we heard this morning, Acts tells about Paul and Silas going outside the city gates to the river, looking for a place of prayer. They speak to the women who have gathered there. They've already made two other border crossings that morning, leaving the safety of the city and speaking to women they don't know. Lydia is one of them, likely a wealthy woman, for she sells very expensive purple cloth. She was a distant ancestor of the purveyors of princes' purple props. And his witnessing was a pretty constant act of border crossing. Lydia hears about Jesus' way, and she claims it right then and there in baptism, together with her whole household. Another day, again going to pray, Paul and Silas meet the slave girl who's being exploited for her gift of prophecy. She follows them for days, telling the world they serve God Almighty and are teaching salvation. She tells the truth, but Paul is annoyed and casts out the spirit within her. We don't hear anything about her response, but her owners are so angry at the devaluation of their property that they get Paul and Silas thoroughly thrashed and thrown in jail. Midnight prayers, earthquakes, chains released, the jailers near suicide, and prisoners and jailer demonstrate their love for one another. More borders are crossed and sealed in baptism. Back to Lydia and the slave girl for a minute. Taken together, their stories are very like those of many other women in biblical border crossings. She is often disreputable, living on the borders of society, and she welcomes God and God's people. Think about Rahab who helps the Hebrew spies enter the land of Canaan. Pharaoh's daughter, who takes in the baby Moses. Mary, mother of Jesus, who agrees to host God in the flesh. The Syrophoenician woman who asks Jesus to heal her daughter. He declines, but she insists on crumbs from the table and she crosses, he crosses his own border to meet her need. The Samaritan woman at the well, the one with five husbands, who receives water and goes back to her community and tells such good news that they all join her on the way. One scholar calls these border women who signal God's willingness to take the way of the humble and the despised. There are also male parallels, often simply discounted, sometimes actively despised, younger sons and marginal figures like David, the shepherd, Moses, Samuel, John the Baptist, most of the disciples, and the converted Paul. People who recognize and answer God's invitation to move into new territory and discover new life. 
Jesus himself is the cosmic boundary crosser. God in human flesh, eating with the unclean, forgiving the traditionally unforgivable, himself dead and buried, yet resurrected, walking, talking, and eating with the living. And here and now among us, within us, and around us. Following his way is a continual exercise in border crossing. The invitations to reconciliation are often surprising and unbidden. A stranger offers insight or asks for help. Another person confronts our opinion about the coming election and raises our ire. Someone at a stoplight holds a flimsy sign asking our compassion. The opportunities are all around us and the challenges are continual if we're willing to open our eyes and our hearts. As Emmanuel begins to celebrate 75 years of existence, you cross into an imagined future, even as you begin to do it in reality. How do we follow the way when we can't see where it leads? The same question faced Jesus' disciples after his ascension. They had several encounters with him after the resurrection but he's no longer face to face with them. He tells them to wait a little while until the comforter comes to give them strength. And then they're tasked to go out and tell the world, to cross every border they encounter, sharing what they know and discovering where God is already at work, and to build bridges into God's imagined future. None of us knows exactly what Emmanuel's future will look like, but we do know something about its direction. Helping children grow and mature in this way of loving faithfulness, partnering with your neighbors here and far farther away. The seminary may be your most obvious neighbor, but you also have a hospital, a synagogue, a library, several schools, and a whole lot of households around you, as well as the neighbors of history. What's the legacy of the many African Americans who took shelter on Seminary Hill after the Civil War? Where might your gifts meet the opportunities in Alexandria in the metro area. There are plenty of borders to cross. The ability to step into the future with intention and courage is something we celebrate today about mothering. From the first stirrings of new life in the womb, we hope and pray that mothers will love us into people who keep walking into the possibilities around us and do it with courage and companions. We hope that for fathers too and for all the friends and pilgrims who are so important to the journey. That slave girl was something of a model. She hadn't met these strangers before but she discerned the truth they were telling and told the world. Paul and Silas shared that truth clearly enough that the jailer heard and saw it too. In a minute, we'll promise to support seven new border crossers. Pray that we might all keep traveling that road into God's future with courage and in company, looking and listening for the Spirit showing up in surprising people and encounters. The borders are all around us. And like Jesus, 
We're meant to cross them today and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. Go somewhere uncomfortable today and bring a little peace. You'll find Jesus there. <laughs>